So, as I was researching for an upcoming Norse mythology video, I saw something on Twitter that quickly got my attention. That thing being of an animated series known as Onyx Equinox. Now, I've never heard of this before, and once I realized that it was all about Aztec mythology, I dropped everything I was doing and just had to watch it. And 12 episodes later, here I am doing a video on it, because of course I am. Now for those of you who don't know, Onyx Equinox is a Crunchyroll original series set in pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica about a boy named Izel who has to close the gates of the underworld because of a bet made between the gods. For those of you who like mythology, anything Mesoamerican, or are just curious about the show in general, I highly recommend watching it. However, just a warning, this is not a show for kids. It's got gore and profanity and all sorts of body parts, both attached and not. And that's all just in the first 15 minutes. Plus it tackles all sorts of mature themes like mental health. So if you feel like something in the show could trigger you in any way, you by no means have to watch it. The creators themselves even acknowledge and understand that this is not a show for everyone. We just want to make sure you take care of yourselves out there. We've also got a bunch of different links, hotlines, and all sorts of resources available in the description below. Everyone here in the Dark Robin crew loves and appreciates each and every one of you, and that's no exaggeration. This specific video won't be diving into those topics, and this isn't a review of the series. Instead, today we're going to be analyzing the mythology and culture in the show. And I also won't be touching on any major spoilers. However, I will be talking about some specific scenes that are accompanied by footage from the show. So just keep that in mind. But you better believe I'm going to make a full spoiler review and pick apart this thing to make on and back. So stay tuned for that. So with that being said, let's talk some Onyx Equinox. This show mainly comprises of three major Mesoamerican civilizations, that being of the Aztec, Maya, and Olmec. If you've been on this channel before, you know that the Aztec and Maya are my bread and butter, which is no wonder why I got hooked on the show the second I found out about it. The Aztecs play a major role in the series, as like I said earlier, the entire plot revolves around the consequences of a bet made between the gods, primarily that of Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent, and Tezcalipoca, the Smoking Mirror. Man, after researching these gods for so long, you start to forget how freaking cool these names are. This bet being that Izel either will or won't be able to close all five gates of the underworld and stop the god of death Miklantagutli from wreaking havoc upon the world. Or more of it anyways, he kind of already did a good job of that already. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the character designs though? I mean the Aztecs probably have the scariest gods I've ever seen, that being next to the Mayans. And these designs really bring that to light. Quetzalcoatl and Tezcalipoca are always bickering with each other in the myths. Like this one time when they were created in the first world, Tezcalipoca decided to become the sun. However, whether due to the fact that he was a god of darkness and night, or because of the fact that he lost a leg due to the beast Ipakli, he wasn't a very good sun. Thus, Quetzalcoatl smacked him out of the sky and replaced him. And oh man, did that start a long lasting feud between them. I particularly like how Quetzalcoatl explains how it all went down after that. Do you see them, Yautl? <clears throat> what are they? They are the children of our great second son. The second age. The second time we attempted the creation of a people to venerate us. We cursed them to this form when they lost their nobility and gave in to... Baser traits. They were the second. Descatlipoca sent jaguars like yourself to devour the first attempt. The third and fourth sons we drowned and set ablaze. I always mix up which is which. Laloc's wife cried blood for 50 years, drowned those humans. Somebody turned them into fish, I think. Humanity is in their fifth incarnation. Billions came before them, now burned, drowned, banished, cursed. If the humans cease to sate us, the sun will darken and the earth will be shattered. And everything and everyone that's ever been loved will be destroyed and remade. Couldn't have said it better myself, Quetzalcoatl. Also, can we just take another moment to appreciate the cameo of the skeleton of the Mayan King Pakal with his jade death mask and everything? <laughs> also, just a side note, that mask was actually stolen from the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City in the 80s, and it was found a year later. They even made a whole movie about it. Also, I appreciate the attention to detail with how the city of Palenque, where Pakal was from, is already in ruins by the time our characters arrived there, since the actual city itself had fallen hundreds of years before the age of the Aztecs which is when the show takes place. Showing that the Mayans were not a society that just existed for a while before everyone simultaneously vanished. Speaking of the Mayans, that's another major part of the show. While it's mostly Aztec gods that appear in the show, most of it actually takes place in the Mayan region. Now when it comes to a lot of stories that use Mesoamerica as a setting, there is a habit of meshing all of them together. Like how the Aztec sunstone shows up literally everywhere. 
and is often wrongly referred to as the Mayan calendar. Including how sometimes Mayan temples end up in Peru? And I have to be honest, it gets kinda tiring seeing things like that. Which is why I feel that it's very important to understand that these are completely different civilizations, with their own languages, culture, history, and architecture. And at first glance, it's easy to think that Onyx Equinox is yet another one of those poorly researched stories, when in fact it's quite the opposite. Let me explain. Again, while it's important to distinguish these civilizations, that doesn't mean that they didn't have anything to do with each other either. I mean, pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica had all sorts of trade networks, including between the Aztec Empire and Mayan city-states. Plus, the show itself makes sure to point out the differences, as Izel and his sister, while living in the Mayan city of Uxmal, were originally from the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Oh, you're not like the others. You're not Maya, are you? We were born in Tenochtitlan, in Mexica territory. We left when we were very young. And according to Google Maps, that's around an 11 to 12 day walk, not counting breaks, which isn't an unbelievable adventure in the slightest. After listening to the companion podcast for the show, the creators acknowledge all these things, so don't worry, they know what they're doing. Not only that, but Quetzalcoatl is one of the oldest and most well known deities of Mesoamerica, going by names like Kukukan and Kukumats by the Mayans. Serpents have even been represented in art all the way back during the Omic times, another one of the main civilizations, and one whose head structures you may recognize from your history textbooks. But before we tackle them, I have to talk about two of the main characters that help Izel on his journey. That being of the twins Jun and Ken, who are absolute masters at the Mayan ball game of Pocotok. This is a clear reference to the hero twins, found in the Popo Vu, one of the few Mayan texts to survive the Spanish conquest. I've even made a couple of videos on the Popo Vu and the hero twins. The characters themselves even talk about the hero twins, saying that the ball that they used during the competition with the lords of the underworld Shababa, being Jun and Ken's birthright. Interestingly enough, in the show, the ball itself acts as some kind of beacon to the underworld gates, which is probably Onyx Equinox's way of explaining how the Hero Twins got there in the first place. Since according to the show, both the ball and the gates are some kind of Omic technology. See, I told you we'd come back to them. Now the Aztecs were really only in power for a few hundred years before the Spanish conquest in the early 1520s, with the Mayans peaking at around 250 to 900 AD. While that, especially with the Mayans, seems ancient to us, that's nothing compared to the Olmec, who were the first major civilization in the region, all the way back from 1200 BCE to 400 AD, meaning that these guys were ancient even to the Mayans themselves, let alone the people during the age of the Aztecs, like Izel and his friends in Onyx Equinox. Like I said earlier, the show revolves around Izel closing the gates to the underworld, which are explained to be Olmec technology. Think the Sheikah tech from Breath of the Wild. Ancient? Yeah, more advanced than what the characters could understand. Which is no surprise seeing as how the creators are Zelda fans. But of course, this is probably the civilization where they took the most creative liberties. Because these guys were so ancient, the creators chose to use the mysterious aspect of them and make it so that the Omics may have been from one of the previous worlds like Hitsukuoto talked about. The creators themselves talked about how they worked on trying to create a cool magical storyline while also respecting the Omic culture. Again, that's really the part where they took the most creative liberties. However, I don't necessarily mind it, as I think they did a pretty decent job at weaving it into the story. The Omics themselves occupied a part of the region that the Mayans eventually would. So it makes sense that the gates of the underworld, and thus the story, would take place in the Mayan region. And again, it makes sense for the Aztec influence to be around, since the era that this story takes place in. Plus, without being too spoilery, later on in the series we do eventually get to see Tenochtitlan, and oh boy, let me tell you that I lost it when I saw this floating city. Never before have I seen such a detailed representation of the Aztec capital in any fictional story like that. And that goes for all the other real life cities that make an appearance. I've only scratched the surface when it comes to how much detail they put into the show. And that's not even counting all of the spoiler bits that I didn't talk about. They really did the research for the show. And even the parts that they added for storytelling purposes were made with a lot of thought put into it. Like the Omic technology and a lot of the monsters that our heroes have to fight. So with that being said, if you can, Definitely give Onyx Equinox a watch, and support both the show and the creators. Now, this is kind of a selfish request, mostly because I really wanted to get it renewed for a second season. You guys don't understand how much I need this, I need to know what happens next. So just think about it. 